Hey guys, Jay Siemens here. Welcome to my new series, The Complete Guide to Ice Fishing. It has been a banner year for fishing license sales and I know a lot of people are gonna be getting into ice fishing this winter. I got a 10 part series coming your way brought to you by Travel Manitoba, teaching you everything you need to know to get on the ice. Before we get into chapter one, what you guys need to realize is my goal is to teach you and it's not to sell you any product. Yes, there'll be specific products featured in this video that yes, I may be partnered with the companies, but that's not the point. It'll be linked below if you want to further investigate, but I want to show you guys the overall styles, the difference between an electric auger and a gas auger and that sort of things. If I do ever price an item, it will be in American dollars. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out what might be the right fit for you. Here's the 10 chapters we're going to be covering on this course. Ice safety and equipment, augers, shacks, dressing for ice fishing, heater options, electronics, rods and reels, lures, rod holders and tip ups, breaking down a lake and how to find fish under the ice. Chapter number one, ice safety. And I thought there's no other chapter that should be first. Ice safety is paramount. You guys are standing on a frozen lake or river, which is an insane concept for my Southern friends to comprehend. Sometimes the ice is thick enough you can drive your truck out but you need to be safe about it first. There are different conditions and variables that'll weaken the ice and I'm gonna to try to share those with you. I'm not gonna to go too in depth on what to do when you break through. Uncut Angling has done a couple phenomenal videos on how to get out and general ice safety when you break through. Please take a chance to watch those. I will link both of them below. Uh, it would be a shame for me to try to do anything like that because I think Aaron knocked it out of the park. So probably the question I get asked the most is how much ice is safe enough to walk out on. And here is a standardized chart. As you can see, um, it shows, you know, for foot travel, for ATV, for small vehicle, that sort of things. And the biggest thing you need to remember when you look at this chart is not all ice is created safely. As you can see on the top, it says, this is for clear, fresh ice. Ice changes throughout the year. It also depends on, you know, the type of lake or river system. Clear ice is king. Clear ice is so much stronger. Later in the season, or depending on how it freezes, you might get milky, cloudy ice, it might get frazzled later in the year. This chart doesn't apply to that, so you need to keep that in mind. Just because where you check the ice doesn't mean that ice thickness is the same all the way across. There's definitely a couple of variables and probably more than I'm gonna list here that can affect ice thickness. So just because there's footsteps, just because there's snowmobile trails doesn't mean it's safe. You need to check for yourself. It is your own responsibility. Here's some of the things that can compromise your ice. First one is bogs. Bogs, weedy areas, these can trap air pockets and I myself have fallen through walking on a bog before. Oh, 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 heads up, heads up. You okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. That, uh... Ice safety. Ice safety. Took one step into the musk egg. Oh, happened very fast. All right, number two, and this is probably one of the biggest ones, is current. Rivers, lakes that have, you know, inflows and outflows, there can be current and sometimes it can be pretty sneaky. Any pinch point between islands and the mainland, there can be current flowing there. So if you're coming close to an area like that, you know, sometimes it can help to check on Google Maps. You can see if areas have stayed open in the winter, if the image happens to be, happens to be taken in the winter. But as well, drill holes as you go. If you zip right through there without knowing, you might end up breaking through. Number three is pressure ridges. And this is kind of similar to, you know, the Earth's tectonic plates shifting and pulling apart. The same things happen on the ice. You get these two pieces of ice pushing together and they can make these massive, huge, beautiful ridges. But as well, when they pull apart, there's actually open water. And the scary thing is that sometimes these ridges will pull apart and on a really cold day, they'll freeze a skim of ice, it'll snow, and you'll be like, oh, there's the ridge, it looks good to go. I've had experiences firsthand where we crossed a ridge in the morning and later that afternoon, it wasn't frozen. So when you approach a pressure ridge, always drill, no matter what time of day, if you've crossed in the morning, check it again and just, just be aware. All right, number four, and this one is more so late ice, and this is access points. This is boat launches or snowmobile trails where people drive on. What happens is later in the season, those snowmobiles or trucks, they bring on gravel, they bring on sand, they bring on salt, and that'll actually deteriorate the ice. So late in the season, sometimes you'll have your thickest ice out in the middle and your sketchiest ice will be near shore at those access points, at those rocks that get warmed up by the sun, that'll actually create sketchy ice. So something to keep in mind later in the season. For all those reasons I just listed, here are a few items you should bring along that'll help stack the odds in your favor and keep you safe on the ice. All right, number one on the list, and this is very inexpensive. Everyone should have these around their neck all the time. This is a set of ice picks. And as you can see, it's pretty much two handles. And you can see this plastic sheath here. And as it pulls back, 
there's two metal spikes. So if I ever happen to break through the ice, it's gonna be very tough to claw it with some wet mitts. So what you do is you grab these two claws, dig them into the ice, and then you can waddle and claw yourself out. You will have a much easier time getting out with a pair of picks. You can either run them through your sleeves, hang them around your neck. You just want them accessible for if you ever need them. All right, number two is a big old metal chisel. This is a great tool. First off for checking ice, this is heavy. A couple swings and you can chop through a few inches of ice. And not only is this a good way to check the ice thickness, but as shown in this demonstration, it's a good way to check the quality of the ice. What I like to do, if you're ever questioning on ice, what it looks like, is actually take a sample. Oh yeah. Like you're doing avalanche work or something. And then you can see the layers on it. And if that's crystal clear, you can see through it. That's the most solid ice you can get. Absolutely. And it gives you an actual read of how deep it is. But I think we're going to be pretty good here. One little tip guys is tying a rope to the end. If you ever happen to lose your grip and this thing slips, obviously you have one more chance to hold it, but as well, you can use this to check your bottom composition. You're trying to find the rock to mud transition, or if you're trying to find subtle changes in depth, this is an Aaron Weeb trick and he used the rope and you could drop it down and hit it on the bottom. Everyone should have a chisel. All right guys, number three, and this one isn't necessarily needed all the time, but these are ice cleats. Some boots you can get with cleats built in, but these you can just slide on, they slide over top of your boots. And this gives you a little grip because early ice, it can be like a skating rink out there and nobody needs a concussion smashing their head on the ice. See how I didn't do a crazy hook set there? Just kind of swept into it. Just kind of swept into it and we're hooked up on the dead stick. All right, item number four, my final main safety item. And this one is a little more of a luxury, but it's also becoming a lot more common. And that is a floating suit. All right, here you have it. This is a floater suit. They're becoming pretty streamlined. This feels like a normal jacket, but it just has that extra little bit of floatant in it. No, this isn't a Coast Guard approved one. This is, you know, a streamlined ice fishing suit that has floating capabilities. And that can give you those couple extra minutes if you happen to break through the ice, which can be the difference between surviving or not. It's just that extra peace of mind when you're out on the ice. Those are some of the essential items to help keep you safe on the ice. But realize no fish is worth your life. Always tell somebody where you're going ice fishing. Another kind of bonus piece of gear that I like to bring, and this one is a little more expensive. This is a Garmin in reach. This is essentially a, a satellite beacon. There's an SOS button, you can send text through it. And it's just that extra peace of mind because so often you're ice fishing out of service and things can get bad in a hurry. Thank you guys for watching chapter one. We're gonna be cranking out the ice fishing content this winter. If you've not subscribed, please subscribe below. Chapter two, we're gonna be tackling how to drill a hole in the ice and the different types of augers.